Here is the small garden in May, May the 13th today. We've had a, on the whole, a pretty average spring. So you can see the kind of growth that you might expect at this time of year. If you're up to date with your sowings and plantings, get things in nice and early. Most things here have had a spell under fleece of their new plantings and the result, for example, if you look at these peas here, which are for shoots. So we're harvesting the, the tips of the plants like that. Um, we're going to pick a, a whole load tomorrow for salad. I'm pulling out a few weeds when I see them. Basically, though, with no dig, there's not much weeding to do here. We spend more time on keeping the edge tidy and stopping the neighbor shrubs invading, that kind of thing. And under the fleece here is something that's not so much for warmth, but it's more to keep the birds off. Um, they come and dig around in the compost and scatter it all over the lettuce leaves. So we've been harvesting these lettuce of different varieties for leaves to eat in salad. And there's also some coriander and dill there, which were planted at the same time as the lettuce in the middle of March. Here is some multi-sown beetroot, which went in while kale was still finishing. And you can see they're starting to grow nicely now. That I reckon we'll be harvesting beetroot in about a month, by certainly by early June. While here we have spring onions, which we've already taken about 100 spring onions. And the way I do it is twisting out the larger one like that. And you can see what a lovely onion that is. And you peel off the outer sheath and you get a beautiful, lovely white stemmed onion. Salad onions, spring onions, it's the same thing, by the way. And I'll leave a few of these to grow and swell and they will turn into white bulb onions. But already I'm thinking, you know, what's going to come next? And like here, for example, we have the very last of the winter purslings. All the leaves have little flowers on. And behind it, the chervil and the lancress and the spinach, which have all been here all winter long. And they are going to finish very soon because they're flowering. So that means they don't produce many more leaves. And we can eat the flowers actually at the moment. We're, we're picking like the lancress, we're picking it like that. And you can eat that whole flower and stem. And it's, it's very sweet, in fact. Uh, but soon we'll be twisting these plants out and this will be French beans and tomatoes here after spreading some compost. The annual dose, which I normally put on in the autumn and we couldn't because it was so crowded with plants at that time. Here the carrots are coming up well and we had radish between them and we took one kilo of radish um, from this little area and that's left the carrots ready to push on. The radish helped pushing up the fleece. The fleece came off just a week ago. This is overwintered garlic hard neck garlic which will crop early July. I'll be planting something between it. I'm not too sure what, possibly beetroot soon. Here there's potatoes and one plant of perennial kale which got hammered by the pigeons in the winter. I did fear a little bit for it. I just didn't have time to cover it um, but I thought it would be all right actually and sure enough it has really survived very well. And the potatoes around it, they're looking a little bit damaged, which is frost. So we had frost here about 10 days ago. And I actually had fleece over, but where the fleece was touching the leaves, you get that damage on the leaf. But it's not the end of the world because the plants you can see are basically healthy and strong. And this is a, an early variety that should crop in about six weeks time. This spinach has been hugely prolific. We've picked kilos of leaves from it because this was sown last August under tomatoes. And that will carry on cropping for about three more weeks. I've got rough ideas of what's going next and it's always good to have that in mind. And that can be a little bit flexible. And the last crop I'll mention is onions. So these are bulb onions, which will take a while yet to grow and swell up by early August. And just at the end, one interesting little one, that's coriander still producing and that coriander was sown nearly 10 months ago, so late July and I planted it there early September, it's just been cropping steadily ever since. So this small garden is producing in the spring at this time roughly three kilos a week of leaves 
uh, plenty enough for a, for a family of spinach, spring onions. It's mostly leaves at this time of year. And then we get more into the fruits, the beans and tomatoes and roots as well in a month or so, carrots and beetroot. Well, it's now the 3rd of June, just three weeks since we were last here. And uh, you can see the amazing transformation. It's the time of year probably when you get the most growth in our climate here, late May. And the days are so long. And we have had some warmth. Actually, we haven't had unusual warmth. We've had normal weather, really. This morning it's quite chilly, so I've got my coat on. Um, but it's now a celebration of what's happened. But also, I want to show you the things you can still be planting and, and to keep up with this amazing growth and what you can do next. So we're picking a lot of pea shoots here, for example. But it won't, won't be long before I'll be sowing... Well, actually today, I'm going to sow some Swedes uh, in modules, which will be ready to plant when these pea shoots stop or finish cropping towards the end of June. They go more into flowering and then trying to make pods and I actually don't want peas here. Um, I want to plant the Swedes next. So within a month, this will be Swedes to crop in the autumn and winter. And the beetroot next to the peas are cropping already. I pulled the first ones on Friday. So that's like twisting out. They're in clumps of four and I'll take a, any larger ones and twist them out for harvest through, throughout June. And I'll follow them with some carrots that I'll be sowing towards the end of June. Last time we were here, this was landcress and chervil, winter salads, winter purslane, and they finished. They started going out to flower. So I've planted peppers and an aubergine and a fusilis, ground berry or golden berry. And just to show how that worked, like there's a pepper plant. You can still plant these now, anytime in the first half of June. It's got a nice root ball. So I make a hole with the trowel and pop them in. And I did the same with tomatoes. So there's a nice tomato plant. This was spinach here. And uh, it was still cropping spinach. And there were a few gaps between. I took out a few spinach plants, <clears throat> made some holes, and popped in a mixture of tomatoes. There's sun gold this end, which is quite early. Lovely orange cherry tomato, and one or two other different varieties there. So these need stakes yet, and they also need side shooting, I'm noticing. So these are, these are cordon tomatoes, so they're going to grow quite tall on stakes, which I'll tie in as they grow. While the garlic here is suffering some rust on the leaves, which is pretty normal for my garden and actually a lot of people um, nowadays, which will mean it won't be such enormous bulbs, but it's a hard neck, so it's not going to be ready actually for another month. And on Friday, a few days ago, I took out the scapes, which is it's starting to flower because it's hard neck. So you, in fact, I think there's one or two still here that I can show you. Yeah, there's one. It's, a, it's the, the top of the plant. So you, it's trying to make a, a seed head and you can just snap that off. That means the energy is, of the growth goes more into the bulb than into this flowering stem. And these are really good to eat. They're like a, a mini leek. Uh, you could say stir fry them or something. Uh, but already between the garlic, because there's quite a bit of space here, I'd, planted them quite wide. I've planted French beans so that there's little French bean plants which are just developing while the garlic's maturing. So there's overlap going on. Now we have carrots coming on quite nicely here. They, yeah, almost, you could be pulling one. Yeah, look at that. Oh, there's actually carrot harvest can start now. 
um, that's quite common for early June. So what I do is go through and take out some bigger ones. I thin them a little bit. There's still quite a lot here, so one could take out ones like this to eat, and then that allows room for more to grow on. And so there's a long five or six weeks period of harvest possible now from this sowing of carrots. And we've had enormous harvests of spring onions from this patch where I planted them very thickly. So, you know, this is all just not fertilized with anything. It's just compost mulch on the surface and um, no dig. So it's allowing fantastic soil life and fertility to happen, basically, what's in the soil already. And the spring onions, these clumps, they had eight or even maybe 10 in, in a clump. And so I can twist out the larger ones like this and still leave one to grow. I remember doing this on the last video actually, so you'll be able to see the difference in how much they've swelled up. And that's sort of in transition phase really between spring onion and onion, if you like, you can see the nice bulb developing, uh, white onion, it's white Lisbon. So, Again, we just carry on harvesting from that. There's been something like eight or nine kilos of spring onions from this little block already. And I think I'm gonna follow them with kale possibly. We'll see. Um, then there's a few coriander and dill. And finally, in this bed, the lettuce, which we're harvesting. So you, I put the net over. I think it doesn't really need to be there anymore, actually. It was to stop birds scratching between and then they kick the compost over the lettuce. But uh, again, it's the taking off the outer leaves and even these, this little germ, you can see it's hearting. But if you keep picking the outer leaves, that slows down the hearting of it and, and you can keep coming back for more leaves. And then there's just one little wild rocket on the end. And the lettuce are going to be followed by, again, maybe more French beans. Um, I'm a little bit flexible on some of these second plantings because it depends a bit, you know, what we want to eat and harvest and, and what plants are ready and everything. And it's, while I'm doing some rotation, I'm not too strict on that. And then coming down this side, these onions, rather like the spring onions there, these are red onions for harvest as bulb onions. But they're, again, they're very thickly planted. So you can have a preliminary harvest of red spring onion like that. So they're good to eat as a salad onion. And so I've that'll be coming for harvest through the next two or three weeks and then these onions will bulb up in early August all being well and I'll follow them with probably chicories and uh, radicchios to make lovely hearts in the autumn well here I've left these to show you on this video these spinach so this spinach I sowed on the 10th of August and it's now the 3rd of June so it's nearly 10 months old it's been here a long time it's fantastic result from one single sowing and they were under sown under tomatoes so this was cherry tomatoes and now spinach and they are flowering and it's funny I had a question on YouTube this morning a guy was saying oh my spinach is flowering why is that you know is the light level wrong or something and I no it's just the time of year it's just what it does in June you just have to accept that but if you sowed it in August, it doesn't really matter because you've had all that harvest before the flowering time. So you can't stop it flowering. So it's just time to twist it out. So like with all no dig, I'm twisting, not pulling too much. That disturbs the soil less and they come out and see a nice root there. But most of the roots are staying in the ground. That's what we want. Food for microbes, which stimulates more growth ongoing. And I've got the plants here just to show you that are going to go in afterwards. These are leeks, multi-sown. I sowed them first in smaller modules, then a friend helped and when he, we were really busy and he potted them on into bigger modules. And then I'll, I'll make a hole with the dibber and pop that in. And it's not, you, that way you don't get a long white shank leek. Most of the growth is above ground, but you still get a long stem and they're really good to eat like that and easier to plant, easier to harvest and you get quite a few, we'll get quite a few leeks all being well in this small area. And then we have potatoes, early potatoes, Casablanca variety. 
and oh yeah there is one there I say to the size of an egg already what I did was um, it had the compost mulch on top and you you can just pull that around them to earth them up if you need to I only do it if I see there are some potatoes um, developing it near the surface and going a bit green in fact there aren't many doing that yet but there could be soon these you could pull out a few to harvest like that if you see them but normally I'd pull the whole plant and that'll be I reckon in about three weeks towards the end of June these these will be sort of maximum uh, harvest and probably I'll follow these with a the planting of spinach sometime in in the summer and I'll just mention too this lovely perennial kale Taunton Dean which we haven't picked for three weeks actually so there's a lot of leaves there and that harvest by taking off these larger lower leaves off the many stems on there and it it just keeps cropping all through the summer and it did get quite hammered by pigeons which like it in the winter but they've left it alone now they've got other, plenty of other things to eat so um, it's just growing unprotected though it's very easy here but if you did have pigeons you'd need to cover it so there we have it the small garden early summer